wasting my money. So we're doing the top five, each of us, movies of the year, meaning that we each have five, not that we're just going to choose five and then argue about it. So the top five movies of the year we're about to list, but first I have a special guest who's actually kind of been on more videos than not lately. <laughs> it's going to be Nick Pell, and Nick, you could... Uh, so yeah, like James said, my name is Nick Pell. My channel is NDP Games. I've been mainly doing movie reviews recently. Um, and yeah, I, I've seen 100 movies this year, so go check out my reviews. And uh, yeah, check out my own top 10 list. We're going to go over the top five movies of the year for both of us here. Um, but yeah, go check out my top 10 movies of the year list there at that channel. Holy shit, top... I mean, 100 of it. Oh my god. Yeah. That's a lot of movies. Yeah. Okay. Safe Flight was number 100, so... Oh, wow. All right, number five for me, and this was really tough. These are hard to put in order, but I'm going to go with Spotlight. Um, it took me a little while to pick this one. Originally, I had other movies on this spot, like uh, The Martian and Dope, and I love both of those movies. But Spotlight kind of, when a movie makes me think after the movie, it means something to me. So besides just the performances being great and especially a standout scene, the movie itself had a very strong message, and I love history. I love learning about a situation and getting really deep into it, and that's exactly what Spotlight does. It goes deep into that investigation of the Catholic Church and the uh, rape and all that and it's definitely a movie that's not easy just to sit there and watch but when you walk out you feel like wow now i actually know the story behind all that all right yeah i agree spotlight is a really good movie um i saw it i loved it it is on my top 10 list not my number five though um, oh <laughs> uh, my number five film is actually uh mocking jay part two um, I've read, or I read the whole Mocking, or not Mocking Jay, I read the whole Hunger Games trilogy way back a couple summers ago, loved it, and so knowing what to expect with Mocking Jay Part 2, it is the, it's the climax, it's the war scene, we have Katniss Lee and the Rebels against the Capitol led by Snow, and it's this huge confrontation, it's a basically city-wide version of the Hunger Games itself, and I absolutely... Really, really love this movie. Um, a lot more than some critics did. Um, it might have its slow parts, but I was in, invested into the whole experience. And uh, Jennifer Lawrence gives an outstanding performance as usual. And yeah, Mockingjay Part 2, my number five choice. Number four. And this one was um, easy to put because I really enjoyed it. And it has four members. So straight out of Compton. Uh, it's an entertaining superhero movie about four young people who meet up and become one of the biggest superhero groups of all time, NWA, and they fight crime by, uh, you know, invading your ears with beautiful, unrelentless music that just is like the greatest music of that time. And, uh, yeah, it's it's about uh, uh, rivalry and uh, betrayal, and it's, it, it is a very good movie. Um, but what I loved about it is something that most critics seem to not like, is the fact that you really get a good look at the music industry and how fucked up it is. Um, so on top of that, great performances, good music that I grew up on. I loved Straight Outta Compton, best superhero movie of the year. I love the fact that you're calling it a superhero movie because... I, it, it feels so much like a superhero <laughs> movie when you think about it. Yeah, I, I agree. Straight Outta Compton, very good film. It did not make my top ten list, however. Oh, wow, we really do have a yes, different Yes, we do. Uh, number four is actually um, a film that I did not enjoy as much initially upon the first viewing, but when I saw it a second time, I absolutely loved it. That's Star Wars oh. The Force Awakens. Um, oh. Yeah, this is a film that virtually everyone is loving, um, more pr maybe more than they probably should be. But, uh, yeah, Star Wars The Force Awakens, fantastic performances. Uh, Daisy Ridley, she delivers a fantastic lead role. And I'm very curious to see where the seventh installment brings the franchise. Uh, it reinvigorated the franchise from the prequels, and I think J.J. Abrams just jump-started another series, just like he did Star Trek. And, yeah, Force Awakens is a film that I, I want to go back and see a third time. Number three is a movie nobody's seen. So, that's why it's on my list, because I love this movie. Uh, the Gift. Uh, it's it, it the, the ending to this movie it still leaves me kind of, uh, like, just almost, like, upset. Like, you, you leave the movie and you're like, fuck. 
And then you kind of think about your own life and like, were you a piece of shit in life? Did you treat other people wrongly? Um, besides that, besides the message of the movie, it's, it's very well performed. All the actors and actresses give it their all. Um, and they play characters you normally don't see them play, which I also found really entertaining. Um, it's a perfect pace movie. It never is boring. It kind of, uh, gives a kind of like this uh, psycho, like Hitchcock feel of some scares. And overall, it's just a great movie with a strong message. And it is one movie I probably will never forget and nobody watch. And that makes me so fucking upset and mad I want to punch someone. My uh, number three choice is a film which just came out. And it was the last film I reviewed this year. And that is The Hateful Eight. Um, oh this gosh. is uh, Quentin Tarantino's eighth film. Um, it is generally about eight strangers in a cabin and just kind of what ends up happening is a mystery. Samuel L. Jackson is generally the lead role of this film. It's the first time I've really seen him in a lead role um, in quite some time. He's mainly been kind of the, the background character, especially in the Marvel films. Uh, so sense. seeing him just like stand out as this main character in this fantastic film, which I... I absolutely loved, especially in the second half of the, the three-hour experience. Uh, it's just a fantastic film. It had me on the edge of my seat uh, during the, the finale of the film. And, yeah, I, I absolutely love The Hateful Eight. And it's definitely my number three choice of the year. Um, number two is going – I'm going to keep it short because you kind of covered it. But Star Wars. Um, Star Wars, like you said – help me get back into Star Wars. I bought the fucking comics again. I I bought Kylo Ren's all over my work desk. It's it's a movie that, like you said, repeat viewing helps. And that's something different you don't expect. Once your expectations are either lower or higher or you just forget about them, the movie is so much more enjoyable. I've seen it three times now. My wife's seen it four. It's a movie that every time you see it, you love it more because it gives you something... You know, besides people saying it's the same old, same old, the thing that I love about it, it gives you happiness. You watch this movie and you have a smile on your face. When I watch the prequels, I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? So, there's... My number two choice is the film that was actually my number one choice of the summer, and it was in my number one spot uh, for the majority of this year until very recently, and that is Inside Out. Um, this is probably the best Pixar film that I've seen in quite some time. Um, the way that it, person that it personifies emotions and just kind of gives them personalities and kind of shows generally why these different emotions are so important to a person's psyche, especially as a young person, um, just kind of growing up and how sadness... Especially um, a woman. What? Especially a woman. <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> uh, especially sadness, just like being... Um, something that society is just like, oh, don't be sad. You shouldn't be sad. Blah blah. In in fact, sadness is basically how we learn to grieve, how we get over things. And sadness is a very important thing, which society the, today is trying to kind of shoo away um, <clears throat> in favor of joy. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Besides all that, I just absolutely fell in love with this film. I cried uh, multiple times throughout it. And yeah, uh, inside out. Um, is one of my favorite films of the year, and probably one of my favorite films in the last couple of years, to be honest. Okay, so my number one, and this is a movie that, uh, you know, it, it speaks to me. It speaks to me because it represents, like, hope in this world. It represents fighting back, and that's Fantastic Four. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> I just want to see your face. Uh, okay, no, seriously, it's, <laughs> it's Creed. Yeah, that's what uh, I was thinking you were going to say. You're like, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> no, uh, Fantastic Four was a, a gigantic piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> no, Creed, Creed was uh, that movie where it took me back to the day when I was seven years old and my uh, grandpa was like, you got to watch this movie. I put on Rocky and I was like, this man is cool. And I didn't really understand the story back then. But as I grew up, I obviously got more and more into it. Um, and despite his sequels kind of sucking for the most part, um, except for Bob Bowen too, Creed is for the generation what Rocky was for then. It, it, it gives you inspiration. It made me want to go and exercise for about 10 minutes. And it, it just it made me want to do things 
more than ever, it made me want to go after my goal because this is a guy who has everything in terms of money, but that's not what he wants in life. He wants respect. He wants his name. He wants uh, to be loved. And all these things that we take for granted, he goes and tries to get and using everything he has. And uh, it's just uh, inspirational, we'll put it lightly. But besides that, the fights were excellent. The acting was phenomenal. Um, and the, the directing, whew. I just oh, I can't wait for Black Panther. Um, but yeah, just overall, Creed is like gotta be that movie. Why I'm gonna watch that shit. It comes on Blu-ray. I'm watching like three, four times every Thanksgiving, every Christmas. Think, don't eat that cake, but then I'm gonna eat it and I'm gonna watch it again and feel bad. I agree. Creed is a very good film. Did not make my list, but still very. Good Holy film. shit! Um, <laughs> I gotta watch a damn list. What's on that list? <laughs> So my number one movie of the year is probably one that not a lot of people have actually seen because I think it's still in fairly limited release. Um, I guess. So uh, I am a fan of Shakespeare uh, and have been for quite some time. I've read a lot of the plays um, throughout my time in high school, college, all that stuff. Um, So when I saw that they were making a live action version of Macbeth, um, I was very interested in it because this is a play that I have not actually read. Um, oh. But being a fan of Shakespeare, I was curious. Michael Fassbender leads this movie, and he does a phenomenal job um, just showing the progression of a man um, who is simply a soldier and the leader of this army. And then he's he's told, hey, you're going to be king. But then this other guy, who's your friend, his children are going to lead and rule for many years to come. But it consumes him over time, just fighting in this, like, basically fate. Um, and I, I, I just absolutely love the film. It's all in Shakespearean language. They don't translate it or anything. Um, and so you, you kind of have to be able to understand that stuff in order to appreciate it. When I saw I think at least four people walked out of the theater because they couldn't understand what was happening. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, I, that's a good sign. Yeah, I know, right. <laughs> um, but I absolutely, I absolutely loved it um, so much. And the fin- the final scene um, just left me jaw dropped at how how fantastic it looked and just the outcome of it. And it was an experience unlike any other that I have had this year um, in regards to a film. And I cannot recommend it enough. Um, so yeah, Macbeth um, definitely my top film of the year for me. Wasn't I wasn't even gonna guess that movie uh, on your list, but all right, all right. Well, that is uh, d- the most different top five <laughs> ever. Uh, none of ours match except for Star Wars. It just goes to show you, Star Wars speaks to hearts. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I would love to see your guys' uh, views of what were what were five movies that you loved. You don't even have to list them in order. Just name a couple of movies that you really stuck with you after you watched it. Uh, list them below. We'd love to read them. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed ours. If you didn't, I don't know what to tell you. Um, if you didn't see our movies, go check them out because now I'm actually going to go watch Macbeth. Um, so there's something. Uh, and everybody have a wonderful day. I was going to say Happy New Year, but it's going to be way past Happy New Year. <laughs>